So, who's ready for a good knit and chat? I know that I am. Um, I am back here in the workroom, still spending more time in bed with the exhaustion than I would like, but I'm getting better. And I have been knitting. In fact, I have been uh, knitting up a storm, uh, primarily on the saddle shoulder sweater. And I am astonished to find that I have made it all the way down the torso. So uh, everything but the sleeves, and I suppose the bind off for the torso, it's all, it's all ready to go. Um, I even, I'll uh, put up some footage here, uh, I put everything back onto, all the live stitches, back onto a piece of scrap yarn, put it onto my male dress form, and was excited to see that, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty much what I wanted. It could be a little bigger in the shoulders, but I have decided, and we shall see what happens, but I have decided that I am going to, I'm going to seek to adjust the fit of the shoulders in blocking, which uh, is a small enough adjustment that I feel fairly confident that I can, I can make it happen. But on the whole, I am very, 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 very delighted. Uh, I have been following the um, Franco.com pattern that I generated at that website, and the only thing that I changed, as I mentioned, uh, I think last time I vlogged, is that I have tapered a very gentle V from the underarms down toward the waist, so that I don't wind up with a lot of extra a fabric around the waist. In fact, there will be very little. Um, I'm not looking for a baggy sweater. I'm looking for something reasonably well fitted. And so I've only gone with two inches of ease on this. And two inches of ease is not very much. Um, it's, it's certainly not negative ease. I am not looking to knit myself a sausage casing. But um, it's also, it's not a big cuddly sweater. It's a fitted cuddly sweater. And why? Well, I just find that I feel most comfortable in those, and I also, as a short dude, I um, I, I don't look great, if you ask me, with lots and lots and lots and lots of extra bundled around me. I'm I'm already wide enough as it is, um, and I will say that every time that I have knitted something to fit, and you know I've I've talked before about how much I love knitting to fit, how empowering. I feel that is, and yet every time I do a fitted garment for myself, I'm astonished at how surprised I am at my own shape and size. What I have in my head and what appears in front of me, you know, defined by the knitted thing that I'm making, it always surprises me. And, and I do realize that part of that is I absolutely do own store-bought sweaters factory-made sweaters. In fact, at the moment, one of the reasons I am going so crazy with this idea of making sweaters for me is that that's mostly what I own. So I have sweaters like that, and I'm used to seeing them when I've taken them off and they've been laundered and I'm getting ready to fold them and put them back on the shelf. They have certain proportions, and those proportions are factory proportions, and my proportions are not factory proportions. So I find myself looking at a piece like this on the form and seeing, well, yes, it does fit me. It is the measurements that I wanted it to be. Uh, everything is going to plan. And yet I look at it and the proportions seem incredibly off. I mean, it's, it's so short for one thing. Well, and I have to remind myself, well, I am short. I am, I am short, especially compared to how broad I am in certain places. And, and that's okay. Um, I, I find that rather than running away from what I'm shaped like, really becoming familiar with what I'm shaped like helps me a lot in terms of self-image. So, you know, score another one for knitting, for not only the warmth-giving benefits of knitting, but the um, uh, the psychological benefits of knitting. So I'm, I'm very excited. The yarn could not be more luscious. This is uh, the Traveler base from the Plucky Knitter, and um, I, I mean, I just love it. There's, there's nothing not to love. It is, it has a lovely amount of halo to it. That's just that, um, that, that fuzz that will just catch the light and give it a little halo effect. Um, the color is delicious, and the thing is so soft that I, it, it's not only that. Oh, you know, you could knit underwear with it. I, it's softer than some of the underwear I own. I swear. 
Uh, and yet I'm not finding, and this is important, um, you, you might want to note that this is the second sweater that I have knit with this yarn. And, and I don't mean this kind of yarn. I mean exactly this yarn, because this yarn was worked into a sweater that I knit during a very bad, distracted part of my life. And that sweater was finished all the way up to the joining of the sleeves into the body. That's how far I got. It was about 80% finished. And I just hated it. I mean, I just hated it. It did not fit properly. It did not look good to me. And so I ripped it all out. And those rewound balls are this new sweater. So this is the second time this has been knit into a sweater. And the yarn is holding up really well. And so that, that matters to me. Um, I am very much of... Uh, the opinion that softness in yarn is not everything. Sometimes there's a tendency to, to think that the two things that a yarn has to offer you are softness and color. And those things are both nice in a yarn most of the time, but if a yarn is beautifully colored and it's buttery soft, but it's going to start to pill and fall to pieces very quickly, mm, that's not a yarn that I'm going to reach for, for a sweater even if I love that softness and I, and I love that color, I am still going to hesitate because all the time that I put into a handmade piece, I want that sucker to last, you know? So, so softness is not everything all the time. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm very happy. It seems to be a wonderful combination of all of them. So um, A++++ for the yarn. Not that I'm surprised. I have been fortunate enough to knit with quite a bit of plucky knitter yarn, and I don't really think I've ever not loved one of their yarns. And uh, again, not a paid promotion. If I should ever get one of those, I'll make sure that it's really clear that that's what I've got. This was actually stash yarn, if you're, if you're newly tuned in. Um, this, is, this is rescued stash yarn. And speaking of my stash, I'm just going to put a little whisper of this out there. As my energy has started to come back, one of the things I find myself contemplating is a good old-fashioned stash toss. Diving into my stash, seeing what's there, deciding what can stay and what perhaps needs to go. Now, I've certainly done that before. I have limited space in a city apartment for stash, so it really doesn't work to just continue to hang on to everything once it comes in. However, what I've never done is toss my stash with people watching. And so I'm thinking that there may be an upcoming vlog or vlogs in which I, um, I bring you along with me, if you like, to watch while I, I go through my stash bins and, and say, oh, I remember that. Uh, and also, where did that come from? I'm sure I never bought that. And also, something I am extremely excited about is that I have been able to finish recording and editing something that will be showing up on this channel very soon that's not a vlog post. Um, I, my Patreon patrons have already had a form of it to preview in advance of the release to the general public, and the centerpiece is a story from my collection. Um, quite obscure. I haven't been able to find that there are many copies of it out in the world, even. Um, mine, I don't think is, I don't think mine is unique, but it's uncommon. And it is a children's story from the 1880s, written by a British minister. And it's, um, it, it's a wonderful example of vi Victorian uh, didactic children's literature, meaning it's meant to entertain you, but also teach you. And in particular, what it's meant to teach you is how to save your own little soul. And so very, very, very much a period piece in every way. And what makes it special um, to me, and perhaps to you, is that knitting, hand knitting, is absolutely central to the plot. The title character is a knitter. Many of the characters around her are knitters, and the fact that she does knit, and what she knits, and where she knits, these are all things that play the central role 
in how the story is told. So I've, I've had this story sitting quietly on my shelves for ages. Well, now I've turned it into what's essentially going to be um, a little audiobook that you can, uh, will be able to listen to on this channel. Um, it's almost entirely done for YouTube. I'll be adding um, a few images to play while uh, you listen. And it's going to be something different than I have done before. And I will be very, very curious as to what you think about it and whether you would like more of the same. Um, there will probably be more of the same because uh, my bookshelves are pretty broad and deep. In other news, the latest issue of Piecework magazine includes my latest article for Piecework. If you don't know Piecework, it's, um, it's a magazine with a, a, uh, a long and storied past uh, that fairly recently has been taken over by a group of um, good friends and longtime colleagues of mine in fiber arts who um, most of them previously worked for Interweave Press, which um, was bought and sold, I think, twice. And well, in any case, the short version of this is that after the previous owner decided that they would cease publication of their magazines, um, this group, Long Thread Media, made up of um, people that I know and trust and like very much, took on some of the best titles that had been under the Interweave umbrella. And Piecework is one of them. And Piecework is a multi-technique magazine. Um, it's about all kinds of handwork. So knitting, crochet, embroidery, weaving, um, sewing, plain and fancy, anything to do with making by hand. But the focus within that is uh, the history of doing that. Historic techniques, historic objects analyzed, and it's been a delight for me that I've been contributing um, short articles that focus on things that are in my personal collection. The latest one focuses on two thimbles that when I've rotated things into view, I've often put these two thimbles next to one another because one thimble um, is very grand and the other thimble is very humble. And I knew the story of the Grand Thimble fairly well, but as I relate in the article, I did not know as much about the humble thimble as I thought I did. And its real provenance, the real maker of it, and the reason that it was created has been a real surprise to me. Um, an amusing piece, but not the piece I thought it was. And you know, that's that's the hazard of history. If you go back and research history and all, I, all, you, that, you, all that you find is what you expected to find, then you probably haven't been digging into your history quite enough. So yeah, so it's a fun surprise in that. And I am delighted that uh, this is the latest article I've done for Piecework, and I've already got something going into the next issue that will come out as well. So that's what I've been up to. Um, as you can see for today, back to my fill in the blanks project, um, which is the sideways linen stitch scarf in Noro. This will get done when it gets done. I have decided not to rush it. But as I am really quite far along now into the first top-down saddle-shouldered sweater, I have begun in earnest checking the pattern for the lighter weight version that I'm going to do, in which I've planned some traveling twisted stitch to see what I want to change about my original ideas, because, you know, your first idea about something isn't always your last idea about something, and often your first idea about something is not your best idea. So yes, all of that swatching that I did for that, that piece, well, I'm revisiting it now, and I still want to do that yarn, and I think I still want to use that technique, but having now been through this particular sweater pattern, it's time to reevaluate and make any revisions that I want to now before I jump into it. So, so that's where I'm at. It's um, it's turning out to be a, a not such a not such a bad couple of weeks, um, even if I have had to spend a lot of them horizontal and um, you know not not up and about, which I'd like to be. But that being said, things could be worse. Cheers to you all. I hope that you are all well and uh, keep an eye on the announcements for the channel because if all goes to plan in the next few days, there will be um, a little audiobook from the Victorian era from me to you. Until then, cheers everybody.
Keep on knitting. Maybe you don't knit. Crocheting. Whatever you do, keep on doing that. And I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel so you'll be the first to know about future episodes. Click like or leave me a comment to let me know your thoughts. And if you really, really liked what you saw, check out my Patreon campaign, where my patrons enjoy exclusive access to downloads, live streams, and other bonus material every week.